Developed in the mid-late 1930s, the Bristol Beaufort fulfilled an urgent need of the Royal Air Force for an effective anti-shipping aircraft. Problems with the Taurus engines would hamper the early career of the Beaufort, but would still be built in considerable numbers in Britain as well as in Australia, and serve in all theatres of war throughout the Second World War. The Bristol Beaufort story begins in 1935. During this year, the Air Ministry issued two specifications. The first one, M1535, called for a torpedo bomber, while the second one, G2435, specified a general reconnaissance bomber aircraft that would replace the Avro Anson. In response to specification M1535, the Bristol Aeroplane Company designed Type 150, which was more or less an adaption of the Bristol Blenheim that had the capability of carrying a torpedo. Next, to meet both specification M1535 and G2435, the Bristol Aeroplane Company developed Type 152, which would become the Bristol Beaufort. The design was influenced by the experience gained from the Bristol Type 142 Blenheim light bomber, however differed from the Blenheim by having a slightly increased wingspan, lengthened fuselage, in addition to an increase in the height of the fuselage, and the ability to carry a semi-recessed torpedo. The original Bristol Beaufort design had a crew capacity of three, however upon the request of the Air Ministry, was changed to four. This change resulted in Bristol having to redesign the Beaufort. In August 1936, with an urgent need for an effective anti-shipping aircraft, the Air Ministry ordered 320 examples of the Beaufort straight off the drawing board. Specification 1036 was written up for the Beaufort. The prototype was originally designed to carry the Bristol Perseus engines. They were also found in the Bristol Blenheim. However, as the Beaufort was 25% heavier than the Blenheim, the Perseus were unsuitable. The decision was made to utilise the brand new Bristol Taurus engines. The prototype encountered delays due to problems encountered with the Bristol Taurus engines, but eventually flew for the first time on the 15th of October 1938. The prototype was sent for testing at Boscombe Downs, where it was uncovered that due to the Beaufort having a tendency to roll, it was a terrible bombing platform. The test pilot described it in the following words, quote, An exceptionally poor bombing platform being subject to an excessive and continuous roll, which made determination of drift particularly difficult. End quote. Later, Beauforts had the addition of semi-circular plates fitted to the trailing edges of the upper wing that corrected the tendency to roll. Other changes during this period included an additional machine gun in the dorsal turrets, as well as the installation of doors to fully enclose the landing gear. The Beaufort entered service with the Royal Air Force in November 1939, equipping No. 22 Squadron and replacing the Vickers Wildebeest in service. These were Beaufort Mark Ones. No. 22 Squadron took the Beaufort into action for the first time on the 15th of April 1940, conducting a mine-laying mission. However, in May of that year, due to ongoing problems with the Taurus engines, all Beauforts in service were granted. Still, the Beaufort would go on to equip nine Royal Air Force squadrons. Six of these were home-based squadrons, while the other three were based in the Middle East. It would also be involved in many attacks against German battle cruisers Gneisenau and Scharnhorst, and the heavy cruiser Prince Eugen. These attacks would often result in high casualties for Beaufort squadrons. In one attack on the German battlecruiser Gneisenau, Flying Officer Kenneth Campbell of No. 22 Squadron, RAF, was awarded the Victoria Cross. On the 6th of April 1941, attacking the German battlecruiser in Brest Harbour, Flying Officer Campbell managed to fly his Beaufort through a barrage of flak, estimated a thousand guns, and line up the enemy battlecruiser. He managed to release a torpedo that would hit and cause significant damage to the Gneisenau below the waterline leaving it out of action for nine months. His Beaufort was then shot down as it banked away, crashing into the harbour and killing Flying Officer Campbell and the three crew members on board. On the 13th of March 1942, he was posthumously awarded the Victoria Cross. In 1942, all nine Beaufort squadrons were deployed to the Mediterranean and Indian Ocean and remained the standard torpedo bomber for RAF Coastal Command until 1943. Operating from bases in Malta and Egypt, the Beaufort was able to attack German shipping, supplying German forces in northern Africa. They were quite successful in this role. 
In 1939, the Australian government decided to manufacture Bofeds in Australia. For more information on this part of the aircraft history, please check out part 2 of this video. With Australian Bofeds being powered by the Pratt & Whitney Twin Wasp engine, the British Air Ministry requested for Bristol to also provide them with Bofeds powered by the Twin Wasp. These would become the Mark II, with the prototype flying in November 1940 and the first production version flying in September 1941. The Twin Wasp offered greater takeoff performance than the Taurus engines. 164 Mark IIs were produced as the British suffered from a shortage of Twin Wasp engines. Consequently, the Mark I returned to production, incorporating a strengthened structure and Taurus 12 engines. Later in the war, the Twin Wasp engine was utilised in the production of the Beaufort trainers, designated as the T Mark II. The T Mark II was a dual control trainer and was utilised by operational training units. The last 121 Bofords produced in Britain were T Mark IIs. The Mark III was a concept that never left the drawing board. It would have been powered by a pair of Rolls-Royce 20 engines. The final British Beaufort variant, the Mark IV, didn't make it much further, with only one prototype ever being built. From perhaps a somewhat shaky beginning, the Beaufort would end up being built in considerable numbers and utilised significantly throughout the war. In all, 2,130 Beauforts were built, 700 of which were manufactured in Australia. Serving in all theatres of war, the Beaufort held its own and served its role very well. Many consider its role in the Pacific to be significant to the Allied victory, while it played a critical role in disrupting the supply lines of the German forces in Northern Africa. This video is proudly sponsored by the official Tomato Wine Store. Go fly over there by clicking the link in the description below to find some really awesome aviation products. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you do, make sure to go leave a like and subscribe for future videos. In the meantime, keep flying high.